color were the original Hebrews? I have told you that we don't know that for certain. Then you can't believe for certain that Jesus was white. Just, uh, just a moment, just a moment. God is white. Isn't it obvious? Well, that is obvious, but we don't know if it's obvious that God is white. The images of Jesus that are on prison walls and churches throughout the world are not historically correct because history teaches us that Jesus was born in a region where the people had color. The first icons were painted in the 6th century. That's 500 years after Jesus died. So how could the artists have known the color of his hair or the shape of his face? Josias has found that the face in the icons corresponds to a type of skull not found in Israel. The face of Jesus would have been closer to these Jewish skulls. They were found in Jerusalem and they date to the first century. And if you look at this, notice how this is very long and this is very, very narrow. It's a complete, complete different type. We used the first century skull to get even closer to the face of the Jesus of history. This certainly doesn't look anything like the images that one associates with him, and I think it's much more likely to be a, an accurate reflection of the majority of people who would have been around at that time. Look at these telling images from a Jewish synagogue in Syria. They were painted in the third century, less than 200 years from the time of Jesus. They're the earliest pictures of Jewish people in the world, and fashions back then changed slowly. The kind of hairstyle that you get, it's short, it's curly, it's, if you like, afro in style, afro in style, and this seems to be almost uniform in the way that Jews are depicted there. It's unlikely that Jesus' skin tones were um, white in the traditional, as, as you get it in much of the traditional art, as you get it in the Hollywood Jesuses. It's more likely had darker skin tones and is much more likely to have looked something like this. You have to understand the initial images of Christ in the Madonna, right. in countries like Poland, Spain, Italy, these are white Caucasian countries, right. worship. A black, a black Madonna, Madonna and a black exactly. Jesus. Yeah. These images were altered and changed. I, I, I think you are, you are suggesting that there's some pretty good historical anthropological evidence suggesting that Jesus just probably was black. Am I correctly stating your... Uh... That's right. Are you there, caller? Uh, yes, Phil. Uh, I just want to say that when God said he was going to make man in his image, he did not mean white, green, or any color. It was supposed to be spiritually like him. Very good. And that's what is important. Well, yes, you well. No matter if Jesus is black, white, green, red, I believe in the supreme being. And yeah. I think that's what we all have Very to look man. at. Right. That there's a supreme well, being. But what, and color, has what, what color. color has Jesus been? throughout your childhood. White, and what I color, think that's ridiculous. Because, what color was his mother? You know, who knows? And I don't think anyone... biblical scholar who explained one origin of African presence in the Bible. Genesis 10, 1 refers to the sons of Noah as Shem, Ham, and Japheth, who themselves had sons after the flood. Genesis 10, 6 refers to the Hamites as the sons of Ham, who inhabited North and Northeast Africa. The sons are Cush, which is present-day Ethiopia, Mizoram, present-day Egypt, Put, present-day Libya, and Canaan, which is present-day Palestine, Israel. 
The African presence is still visible in Israel today. There are thousands of African Palestinians who live in Israel with deep roots to the land, whose ancestors date back for centuries. I met with Ali Jadah, tour guide, and the informal mayor of the African Palestinians in Jerusalem. I asked him about his life and relations between the Afro-Arabs and the Jews. As a black Palestinian, I am uh, double oppressed. Double oppressed by the Israelis. First of all, they oppress me as a Palestinian. Uh, secondly, they oppress me because of the, my color. Whenever I go around in the Israeli side, they call me Kushi. Kushi means nigger. We have a little Canaanite boy, and he is with the donkey, and he's taking care of his sheep. I am Canaanim in Israel. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him, but they knew not him, but they knew not him. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water, and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them, and watered their flock. 
And when they came to Reuel, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us. An Egyptian delivered us. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. As his other flesh. was led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Are not thou that Egyptian, which before these days madest an uproar, and ledest out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? Are not thou that Egyptian? Are not thou that Egyptian? Thank you. 
the sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog, and Medai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Togamah. But the Bible also foretold that a day would come when God would gather his children back to the land of Israel. God is gathering his children home and it is Christians bringing them and it is Christians bringing them. That is our form of witness. There has never been a more persecuted people, a more oppressed people. There has never been a more persecuted people, a more oppressed people. And you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you. And now the people of God around the world are responding to this mandate as never before. This global prayer initiative is established with the support and participation of nearly 1,000 of the world's most respected Christian leaders, united with one voice, calling the church to prayer for Jerusalem. It's God's direction for us. We come to the conclusion that if Israel is blessed, ultimately the world's going to be blessed. The most important thing we can do today is pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need international help. We also need supernatural help. Over 400 of America's foremost evangelical leaders together in one room with a single purpose, to speak and act with one voice in support of Israel. The largest pro-Israel organization in the United States and one of the leading Christian grassroots movements in the world. That first meeting so inspired Christian leaders that just five months later, their influence encouraged over 4,000 Bible-believing Christians to converge on our nation's capital for the first Washington-Israel Summit. Christians from all 50 states came together at the Hilton Hotel in a passionate and unified display of support for Israel and and the Jewish people. The timing was ordained of God. As Israel went to war in Lebanon, Kufi was boldly supporting them in Washington and their support of Israel's right to the land by biblical mandate. I can't resist to say it. I will be silent no more. Our times demand it. Our history compels it. Our future requires it. And most of all, God is watching. All Christians who love Israel are invited to join. They can start by signing the Israel Pledge, which states, We believe that the Jewish people have a right to live in their ancient land of Israel, and that the modern state of Israel is the fulfillment of this historic right. These curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. 
for over all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and shall pursue thee, and shall pursue thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. There ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwoman, and no man shall buy you. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. Their toil helped make the United States the richest nation on earth. Thou shalt build an house and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thy 
sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. Thus saith the Lord my God, feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty, and they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty, and they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. Thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life, and shall have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even! that even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart, and thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. And no man shall save thee. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. 
He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth, for a spoil, and none saith, Restore. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Cush, and from Cush. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Don't go for this black Jesus at all. And praying to a white Jesus all their lives. This is their Jesus. And no activist of the moment is going to come along and rip that imagery out of their soul. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger, and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him. Yet he laid it not to heart. 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 